Hey guys, it's Chris and Eric on YouTube. Oh boy, we don't even know what we're going to do yet. You, you, you know, um, it scares me a little bit just knowing that it, it's just the two of us because it is just the two of us. You know. And there's there, no one to hold us back. There's a lot of coworkers of ours that are probably terrified right now or very oh, yeah. excited. I'm not sure how this is going to go down just yet. Both. If it, yeah. I mean, both. So, uh, Eric, I'd like to just say it's always good to talk to you. Right, same. I, I feel fun. like it's been a rough couple of weeks trying to get uh, a hold of one another. Yeah. So tell everybody what's been up. You've been uh, you've been in a tournament. Uh, yes, actually. And in, in fact, I, I got a few things that I wanted to show off. Oh, boy. So I, I don't know how well it's going to come off on camera. Do not get us canceled on YouTube. Keep your no, pants no, 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 on, no. shirt on. I pulled off, uh, for, for the people who don't know, I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day when it like first came out, right? And uh, um, did a lot of tournaments and stuff like that back in Florida. And I really missed human interaction, of all <laughs> things. And I, I decided to pick it back up again and go to my uh, local game store and try to play. So I've been getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh! And on one of my first boxes, I'm not sure if you can see that or not. I'm going to try to, like, it It should look all silver. Yeah, there's, um, it, I can see an outline of something on the card, but I can't really tell what it is. It is the Ghost Rare of the blue eyes white dragon okay um and this one is going for like 200 bucks and i pulled that from a pack nice and i'm like get the fuck out of here like nice. I, I need a blue eyes for a blue eyes deck that i'm going to be working on but i'm not going to be using that one that one is definitely um a collectible one and then i've got my uh gold border dark magician that I pulled from a different pack. And I spent a, li a lot more money on these things than I should have. But most, um, most of what you just said is completely foreign to me because I don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, they're the two most iconic fake creatures. Like, uh, the Dark Magician is Yugi's and uh, the Blue Eyes is Kaiba's. And those are like the two from the original. Um, I know but... Pikachu. Okay. And Charmander. You have to know uh, at least like Karibo or something from Yu-Gi-Oh! Or... I mean, I've heard you the know... name, but I'm not going to be able to tell you anything about what Karibo is. Okay, that's fine. But yeah, no, I got back into that. I've been going to some tournaments. Actually, I went to go uh, to a new place today because the place that I went to last time uh, accused me of like stealing something. And I was just like, all right, whatever. It was a, it was a case, right? It was... um. Well, I don't have it near by, but it was just a like a red case. It's like twenty or thirty bucks, and uh, it was like a thirteen year old kid. So rather than argue with him because he lost his, I'm just like, well, whatever. Maybe I did make a mistake here. Have the fucking case. Like it's not that big a deal. But it, now Dude, everybody it's thinks a thirteen that, like, year old I'm a kid. You could have taken him. I yeah, but like at that point now I'm a grown ass man taking out a thirteen year old. You know so. At, now, either way, it's just kind of awkward now to go back to that shop. So I want you to get different yourself place a today. good lawyer, bud. That's what you need. You just need a good I, lawyer. That's all. I should have just said, you know, fuck you. You lost your shit. But like, keep better, uh, like, care of your stuff, man. Like, whatever. But uh, no, it was just awkward to kind of go back there. So I decided to check out some other areas. And uh, I went to a place today that uh, unfortunately has not started up their uh, tournaments. So I didn't play in one today. So I was, That's yeah, I was kind of upsetting. It, it's upsetting because I spent all this, uh, this money and something that I really enjoy thinking that I'm going to be able to do this. And I, I wasn't able to. And then on top of that, I was like, you know what? You know, since I can't do it, I might as well try to, uh, trade in my car. Right. Cause I wanted to sell my car. Um, so I went to a dealership today, and I don't know when this happened, or maybe it's a northern thing. So that's just, I'm just impressed at the. Uh, I'm just impressed at the, uh, the direction that went in. You went from not playing Yu-Gi-Oh to just I'm going to trade in my car. Like oh, that's, well, I, it was a huge the plan step. anyway. Okay, <laughs> like I wanted to enjoy myself, but if I was if I couldn't do that, I at least want to be productive. 
So I figured I'd get this out of the way. But the fucking dealerships aren't open on Sundays here. And I don't know if that's like a post-COVID thing, a Michigan thing, or just like a crazy... An like, Eric's bad luck thing. Yeah, or that, because I feel like that could happen too. Yeah, so I was just like, cool, I'm not doing nothing. So I just went home and ate, and then uh, I con I contacted you and said, like, hey, what's up? What's going on? Let's do something. And so, I forgot Dan has his, his uh, radio Dan's show. Dan's doing a radio show right now. Yeah. So what you wanted to do is you wanted to to reminisce a little bit. Yeah. A little. I figured I'm doing it now. Yeah. A little, I feel like you, nostalgia. Yeah. I mean, what like what did you used to do back in the day that you wish you could do again? Uh, sleep through the night. Amen. Oh man. <laughs> that would be something I would love to do again. You remember being a kid, falling asleep, and your parents could literally pick you up. And drop you off somewhere else, and you would never fucking know. You were that just happened. like, "How did I end up in my bed?" I was at a sleepover at a friend's house. We were downstairs in the living room. I uh, lived in a bi level, so it was one of those houses where, like, the downstairs is like the big family room area, and then there's also a living room upstairs. That's where our sleeping bags were. We're watching a movie on the TV. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I fell asleep watching the movie. I woke up in my sleeping bag. I have no idea how I got there. I, I never figured out if, like, his dad carried me to the sleeping bag or if I did it on my own and just have no memory of it. Right. I mean, now, if, like, the fucking... If it if it's too windy, I'll fucking wake up. Like, it's like, what the hell? So, I can't one night... Nothing. It was actually very recently. Uh, the power went out. And the only reason I knew the power went out was because all of my background noise stopped. The fan just turned off. And that woke me up out of my sleep. And I'm just like, it's really quiet and really dark. Well, great. I'm not going back to sleep now because I need some kind of white noise to fall asleep now. Because I'm not a kid anymore. Remember, like, falling asleep with the lights on and the TV on and then, like, you got, like, a, a good night's sleep anyway? Yeah. Yeah, Man. no. I can't do that. Light. No noise like that, like it has to be like a white noise, like a steady noise, like the fan going. Other than that, I can't sleep. I but I, I think you wanted me to mention something fun that I used to be able to do, not grown up problems that? that I have now. Come on, fun like sleeping was fun back then. Not really, because we didn't want to sleep. That was no. the thing. Remember when you were a kid and you just didn't want to go to sleep? You're like, I don't want to take I'm a nap. Stay up all night. Yeah, right. What the hell? Now we're just kind of like I thinking. Mm. Three o'clock in the afternoon. There's nothing to do. I guess I could take a power nap on the couch. Yeah. Now I will be cat. up all night. Then until a cat jumps on your face. Hey, you dead? Hey, wake up! <laughs> wake up! Wake up! <laughs> so here is one thing I do miss actually doing as a kid. Uh, me and my friends used to hop on our bikes. Go to a spot in the woods where we made a fort. Not like an actual fort. Like we didn't actually build one. It was an imaginary fort. But we had all the landmarks. Like where you walked in the trees was the main door and everything. And we would have our super soakers and like foam swords and everything. And we would just play. Like kids. Like kids were supposed to. And I do genuinely oh, like miss that. Like I guess the closest thing you could get to that now would be like to go play laser tag or join a LARPing group, right? I mean, yeah. I, I I feel like you mentioned something that kids now don't even do. Because I feel like maybe some do. Maybe some will go out into the woods. But everybody seems to be like a stay-at-home body. Nah, not in my neighborhood, dude. I, the kids are outside playing all the time. Yeah? All the time. I, I don't know. Maybe it's because I feel like I live in a <laughs> so, retirement neighborhood. <laughs> okay, so I actually, I'm glad you brought that up because I actually think that that's a false narrative that, like, the older generation's trying to, to drop on the younger generation. Like, I don't think kids are completely tuned to their screens anymore, any more than we were addicted to watching TV and playing video games. Oh, think, that wasn't the point that I was going through. No, I'm just saying, like, but I'm just, but it's a, it's a time to bring it up. I think kids still play outside plenty. You know, I know that because I'm almost always running them over when I'm trying to get to work. The roles have changed. The roles have changed. Now, now I'm the one trying to run the kid over. 
Um, I just feel like we did a lot of dangerous shit. I remember playing around. It, there was like a, a sewer opening. And I was just like, oh, cool. We could be like Ninja Turtles and actually going into the sewer system. You know what I mean? Uh, not caring That's about that. That's a horrible like... idea. Even as a kid, I knew that was a horrible idea. I know it was a horrible idea. But it was fucking fun. There was something about like that danger element to it. Like, oh, man, if I die, nobody's finding this body. Like, there's just something about it. Oh, I'm amazed you're maybe... sitting here talking to me right now. You know what? My parents feel the same way. <laughs> yeah, hi, Mom and Dad. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I definitely never crawled into any sewers. No, I liked playing in the woods. Um, I was a Boy Scout, so I spent a lot of time on camping trips and everything. So, like, you know, the woods never bothered me. Um, yeah, like, obviously, yeah, I like to play video games and everything, even as a kid. But... But I still had that outdoorsy side of me. I still kind of do. Like there's camping. Camping? Camping was fun. Camping was Not fun. Hiking. I See, hated I... hiking. Oh, because that involves exercise, Eric. Correct. With, with camping, you can just lay down. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more your style, too. <laughs> no, I've gotten I've gotten a bit better about that stuff uh, these days. Um, I haven't gone camping in a long time. But... The only thing is now it's just because, you know, as I've gotten older, I've developed back problems um, just from the fact that I was in a really bad car accident years ago. Never quite recovered from it. So I don't think I would be able to sleep just on the ground anymore. Like, I don't think that's possible for me. But if I had yeah, it, I, I try sleeping on the ground. I mean, like a decent blow up mattress. Maybe I'd get a little bit of sleep, but like. Yeah, camping was always fun. Um, just had this conversation earlier about building a fire. And, like, I remember how to build a fire. It's not something you really forget how to do. That was always some of the best stuff, though. Roasting marshmallows on the fire. Or your hot dogs. Like, because we would always just bring hot dogs on camping trips. Cook them on the fire. You know, put them on the end of the stick. Hold them over until they're nice and cooked. You want to know a funny story? About a hot dog? A marshmallow? No, about, about a fire? fire. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I got two of them. <laughs> so we'll go with the uh, the first one. I was in Boy Scouts as well. And every time it was like, hey, learn how to make a fire out of like nothing, basically. That that was the day that it was always raining. Like it was everything was fucking wet and you could just never make a fire. So we ended up just using matches and lighters and I never got that fucking patch. <laughs> And I was just like, I don't know if it works or not. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how to fucking do it. I've never done it. So unless there's matches or a, a piece of flint or one of those um, strikers, I'm, yeah, no, fire's not happening. I always felt like it was kind of cheating because we always did basically use lighters and stuff like that. First of all, using friction on two sticks to actually get a fire going takes a lot of effort. Like, I don't think people understand how much effort that actually takes. Flint is probably your best thing. Uh, two rocks together to form a spark, if you do it right, is the, the best way to do it. But the whole rubbing two sticks together, you can do it. But you got to be very, very quick, create a lot of friction. You better have a lot of stamina and a lot of patience. Well, yeah, and make sure your shit's dry. Well, that yes. was the thing, was finding dry kindling in Florida. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. That's fair. Because I went camping in New Jersey where it actually, you know, could get dry. <laughs> so, yeah, it never happened. And then the second fire story is uh, I actually did manage to get something on fire because I did find something dry. It just happened to be a mattress. <laughs> Would you find a mattress so in the little... woods? <laughs> You find a lot of shit in the woods in Florida, man. <laughs> and I almost started a brush fire. It got out of control pretty fast. <laughs> Since we're doing nostalgic oh, fire stories, I've got one. So one... I, I, I won't mention any names, mostly because I actually don't remember them. But there were a couple of scouts in my troop that were... Let's just say... Um, if they're still functioning as adults today, color me shocked. Like, if they made it to adulthood, good for them. Because they were 
We tell a lot of funny stories, but these kids actually did do really stupid stuff. So, one of the kids decided to put corrugated wood in the fire. The flames were green and highly toxic. So, we quickly shut that down. And then somebody decided to put a really stiff plank across the fire pit. Which wasn't a bad idea because it was a really thick piece of wood, so you're going to get some long fire out of that. Because Okay, so the art of building a fire was always uh, tinder, kindling, and logs, right? Tinder is your, your really quick, easy-to-burn stuff. The stuff that will get a flame going really quickly, but it's not going to last long. And you put... So you want to light something that you know is going to definitely light, like a piece of paper or dry leaves or something. Then Ooh. you have all your little twigs. Your twigs will catch fire, but those will last a bit longer, and that'll get the flame going on the big pieces of wood, and that's how you start a campfire. There, I just taught everybody something. There's a little bit of survival skill for you guys. Just getting that initial spark. Yeah, that's the get that initial part. spark, right, which is why you use those three elements. The dry leaves are going to ignite very quickly, but they're not going to last long. They'll get your twigs lighted, which will last longer, but not long still, but that's enough to heat up your bigger logs, and once those catch fire... Those will burn for a really long time. And then you just have to monitor your logs. And as one starts to go down, you put in the next one. And you just keep doing that the fire's as big, until the fire is as big as you want it to be. And you keep it that way. Also, never... Surrounded by rocks. Surrounded by rocks in dirt. That's the best way to do it. Nice dirt pile surrounded by rocks. And never start the damn fire unless you have your fire bucket. I can't stress that enough. You need something to put the fire out. So have several, either one big bucket, several small buckets, fill to the brim with water. So when you're ready to put the fire out at night, you can douse it properly. Our fire bucket was my friend named Mikey. He was always ready to go pee at a moment's notice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's one way to put a fire out, but I don't want I don't want to be exposed that close to an open flame, so I'm going to pass on that. <laughs> so anyway here's another story about this plank nice sturdy piece of wood and this plank ain't going anywhere it's lit but it is just hanging out over this fire pit so one of the scouts is like i bet i can walk across this thing steps on to the plank steps off with all body weight on this foot boom right into the fire pit jumps out immediately and says the eternal words we were all thinking Wow, that was dumb. <laughs> you are correct. Yep. yep. You 100%. Are, you are 100% correct. That was indeed dumb. You know what actually want... was fun camping, though? And it's not going to sound like fun camping to a lot of people, especially you indoorsy types. Winter, ca winter tent camping actually wasn't as bad as you might think it is. Because when you pitch a tent on snow, that's comfy as hell. I I wouldn't know. Yeah, I've no. never done it. I know. <laughs> well, yeah, you I can tell you. You grew up in, in Florida, Florida, so when it snows, you get away from that as far as you can. Right. In Florida, the comfy part is not not there. It's just, it's never comfortable. No, it's never comfortable. Just find something flat, and make sure it doesn't have any rocks, and more importantly, snakes in it, and uh, then you should be good to go. We had to learn how to set up uh, like bear, not bear traps. Um, fuck, what do they call it? You're tying off your food and stuff to keep the bears from, uh, from getting to it. Yeah, I know what you're talking them. about. It's, uh, it's what a, is it called? It's basically a deterrent. Yeah. We, you hang it from a tree uh, and whatnot, mm -hmm. and then you get mad because you also can't get it down. And Yeah, anyway. But, <laughs> um, what we used to do was put our food and snacks and stuff up on the tree, and then wherever it would hang, we'd put our tent directly underneath it. Okay. Um, later, we find out that that's a fucking terrible that's idea. That's a horrible idea. Yeah, but... Do you know why our, that's a horrible like, idea, Eric? The Scoutmasters never fucking told us. They they never fucking told us. They just, they just let us do it. And then Okay, uh, so your snacks are up in the tree. Yeah. The bear showed up in the campsite to specifically get the snacks... Where do you think the bear is going to stand? I was 10. <laughs> if that. 
If that, okay? I'm Wait. thinking, ha-ha, the bear can't get to it now. There's a tent in the way. Not oh, ha-ha, the yeah, bear's going okay. to try to use the tent as a ladder to try to get the food. All I right. think you all know where this is going. I got a camping story for you. Um, if you're watching this, bud, um, you're going to definitely remember this story. I won't say your name. I won't embarrass you. But it's been a long time, and I'm sure you've probably told this story before. One of my fellow scouts, uh, one in the same grade as me, was on one of the camping trips. I wasn't on this trip. I, I don't remember if it was a camping trip or if he was doing the um, the survival wilderness thing that they did in scouts that I never got. You had to get, like, picked by your peers. I never got picked for it. But honestly, after hearing what it was like, I probably didn't want to. Um, so he just, he was a jock in high school. And he liked to put lots of gel in his hair. And he did this for his camping trip. Because, you know, you, you want your hair to look nice and spiky when you're going camping, of course. So, the scent of his hair gel attracted a bear. And the bear was trying to get to his hair gel and was licking his head through the wall of the tent. He woke up out of his sleep to the wall of his tent on his head and a bear on the other side physically licking the outside of the tent to get to his hair gel. This became a very famous story. Uh, this was so famous that we were at a different summer camp that year, a camp in New York State that was horrible. Uh, and we, we went from our usual summer camp in Jersey to one across the border, which had all kinds of different rules in New York State. That was just a real pain. That, For example, the buddy system was so strict that you couldn't go anywhere without a partner. So if you were going to like a merit badge session, you had to like walk each other there. And then if one of you, like, stopped and the other one had to keep going, somebody had to, like, physically walk you there and then somebody had to, like, walk them back. It was it was just a huge mess, even if... So, I don't even remember how we pulled that off. I think some of the times we just said, screw it, and just went by ourselves because we just had enough at that point. So, he's casually telling... Again, this is in a completely different state at a completely different camp with people we don't even know. And he just casually brings up the story. And the counselor looks up and goes, That was you?! Oh my god! And they called, like, everybody in the camp over to meet him because his legacy was spreading throughout various summer camps in the area. The guy who got his head licked by a bear because of his hair gel. They're like, dude, you're famous! Like, they shook his hand and everything. I'm like, that's awesome. I mean, he's lucky he didn't get bit. Uh, he's lucky he didn't get a lot of things. <laughs> the bear was licking his head. Let's, let's remember that. And the only thing between him... Was that in the bear's mouth was the thin piece of fabric of a tent, something that a bear could easily get into. <coughs> so the bear was probably looking at it like, "Is it the tent? Well, the tent's too big to fit in my mouth, but maybe I could lick it." <laughs> something sure tastes good on the other side. I almost wonder if the bear could even taste it. I don't think he could. Probably not. I don't he think just tasted fabric. Whatever yeah. that was. It's just like, well, it smells good, but it tastes like plastic. So when we were doing our high adventure hiking out in New Mexico, one of the uh, one of the nights we were staying in a lean to. Do you know what that is? Uh, is that's the uh, tent that you just kind of like lean off uh, on a on a side of a tree. Right? Well, it's not really a tent. It's a it's a physical structure, Harp. but it has it's only built with like three walls. Yeah, kind of like a like an amphitheater kind of thing, right? Like so. You've got the wooden platform that you can walk on. You can set up your sleeping bags and everything on it. And then there's two walls on each side and a big wall in the back, and you have a roof over your head. You just don't have the big open space in the front. So it does protect you from the elements. And then you can also, like, hang up. Like, what we would do is we would hang up, like, our tarps and stuff on the outside. So we have a little bit of privacy. Make and, it like a, a door flap type yeah. of thing. And that way, if it does rain and the rain happens to be blowing inwards toward you, you've got a little bit of protection there. But we're on we're in one of the lean tos and everything, and one of the kids is like fascinated by the spider that he found. And he's like, "Dude, check out this spider! I've never seen anything like this." And here comes like one of the head scouts, walks over and just crushes it immediately. He's like, "Why'd you do that?" He goes, "Okay, we're not in New Jersey. We're in New Mexico. Okay." When you see a spider out here, it's not a good thing. So if you let that spider go, 
because it was a brown recluse. Look that one up, kids. He goes, you don't want to get bit by that. Do you know what one of the things we had to do on this camping trip was? You guys are going to love this for those of you who are, like, itchy about going camping. Before you would sit on one of the toilets in the latrine, you had to take a stick and brush under the seat in case there were any Black Widow spiders under there hanging out. Yep. I found yep, two. I remember doing that. I found I never two. found a Black Widow, but I, I found, like, all sorts of random lizards and shit. Yeah. Things that you don't want biting your butt when you're trying to have a nice poo. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I um, remember, New Mexico, different things are out there than we have on the East Coast, so pay right? attention. Can you imagine being, like, a Boy Scout in, like, Australia? No! Fuck that. Fuck that. There probably aren't any. They're probably all dead. So I have, uh, I got two stories. I got one where, uh, the time that I took a snake home. Oh, boy. I didn't know. I didn't know I brought home a snake. It was, um... We had literally got up the day that we were supposed to leave. We zipped up our tents and stuff like that, and we had breakfast. Um, This was like a... It wasn't just us, right? It was a bunch of scouts. It was one of those things where we all camped out, and it was kind of like a um, triathlon type of event or whatever, but we all just camped out for a couple of days and and did some... Was it one of those ones where like you you competed in different stuff related to scouting, like knot tying and things like that? Okay, yes. yeah, yeah. We had those. Um, okay. We always did really well in them, too, because we actually had, like, outdoorsy-type people in our troop. We we did well in a, a few things, but there were certain things that we just couldn't, like, we had no knowledge of, right? Like, the, the not time we had knowledge of, the fire starting one was one that we were just like, well, what the fuck would we do? Like, why would we need this? And then uh, why surviving. Why would we need this? Okay. Good luck in and the then, wilderness, kids. We, we were not ready to survive in the cold. Like, all of the Florida boys were just like, this bullshit, fucking shaking and everything. Okay, okay please tell me what cold is in Florida terms. Uh, It was like 50 degrees where we were at, but we were not in Florida. But we all literally came from Florida where a brisk day is like 80. You know what I mean? So, like, we're used to that kind of weather. So anything under 70 degrees outside when you're not used to it is fucking miserable. You would have and died we, on the camping trips I used to go on. You would have literally I died. I probably would have, yes. Um, so when you wake up and, in the middle of the night to take a drink of water and your water bottle's completely frozen because it's below freezing, so you have to, like, smack it around and break up the ice just to get some water? No, thank you for that. Hey, but look, hey, look, my um, we all had breakfast, and we made we went back uh, to you know take down our tents and stuff like that, and then go uh, get ready to go home. So I uh, wrapped up my sleeping bag, wrapped up the the tent. Uh, we didn't use my tent, right? We used my buddy's tent because his was bigger, and then they wanted us to be all paired up. Uh, so we're just like, all right, cool. So we'll just use your tent. So um, my tent was still in the Scoutmaster's uh, SUV. But we, like, never got it out of the SUV. So I literally have a duffel bag, I guess, where I would keep my tent on one side and then my sleeping bag on the other side. And then I would put the, I would, like, uh, fold the duffel bag a little bit. And then I would put that in my actual uh, camping backpack or whatever. Um, So uh, that (laughs) That way it's all in one spot. It sounds like ingenuity, actually. (laughs) Well... Makes when, it easy to carry. Yeah. So I was just like, all right, this is this is fucking awesome. I, everything is like, like uh, has its own spot. I used to be very organized. I don't know what happened. But anyway, so I uh, made it all the way back home. And then we go and we clean out our stuff, right? So uh, a couple of days close. Yeah, like instead of just having them in a random spot, I took all my dirty clothes and I had shoved them in my sleeping bag. Um, just to kind of help to cover up the smell if it does start to smell and all that. Anyway, so I, I start undoing the sleeping bag, and then I notice that the sleeping bag is also undoing itself. And I was like, huh, what the fuck? And I'm inside, and it starts, like, I just see, like, this little sliver thing, and I'm just like, hmm, that's not great. And in my infinite knowledge, I just reached in with my hand, <laughs> to be like, what is this wiggly thing that is in my sleeping bag? 
magically though, and I don't know how I did it. Magically though, I got like right at its head and pulled it out. It wasn't it wasn't poisonous. It was just like a, a rat snake. But I didn't know. I had no fucking knowledge. <laughs> I I'll just went reach in and grab it. And then the my, my mom, my poor mom, she's just like, "How was your trip?" And I'm holding the snake. I'm like, "It was fun." And, it, and she's like, "Why is there a snake in the house?" Oh my god! <laughs> uh, from I'm surprised you that ever got kicked on, out of your house. Uh, oh, my parents love me. Uh, well, my mom loves me. Uh, I'm sure, my dad does too. But anyway, from that moment forward, anytime I went camping, I wasn't allowed to bring anything into the house. I had to go into the garage and do whatever I needed to do in the garage first. And I was like, all right, that's fair. <coughs> you want to hear some snake stories? I got a couple. Go for it. This is one of my favorite stories. So I was in fourth grade. I actually remember that distinctly. Um, we were going to a baseball game that night. My grandparents were in town for it, too. So uh, we had a, we had a local team. This was this was back in the day. So they don't they're not affiliated anymore. But the St. Louis Cardinals, their single A baseball team, played in Sussex County. So for you baseball people out there, Major League Baseball is obviously the the main brand, and then there's Triple A, Double A, and Single A. Single A would be like the lowest of the farm team, but they still scout talent from there and everything. So the New Jersey Cardinals were playing, and we always we went to games all the time in the summer, all the time, because the tickets were cheap. It was local stuff, and it's baseball. Baseball's fun, even if it's a, even if they're just you know young players hoping to make it someday. So we're in the house, you know, everybody's bustling around, getting ready, and the only thing that was left to do was to bring the cat in, my old cat, my sister comes running into the house from the backyard, screaming. What's the matter? Huey got a snake. Okay. And here comes my cat out of the woods, just carrying a snake. It was a big snake, too. Not like... Not not one of your typical little, like, ones that are like this thin. Like, this thing actually had some girth to it. So she brings it onto the back patio, you know, where it's hot, and the snake can't really get around that much on the patio. So it's trying to, like, hide its head. And my cat's just like, no. Poof. Smacks the head out again. It's like, looking at it. It tries to hide its head again. Poof. Like, no, she wants to play with it. Now, I knew my snakes, and I knew this wasn't a venomous snake. But the problem is with my family, everybody's petrified of snakes. Petrified to the point where, dude, it looked like West Side Story. My, my mom, my dad, my sister, and my grandfather all, like, on the other side of the patio, gesturing wildly, like, to do something about this. Thankfully, the family had me and my grandmother. Shout out to Grandma. Uh, Grandma's turning 95 next month, by the way. Shout out to Grandma. And uh, we saved the day. We simply just got some sticks, gently moved the snake into the grass so it could escape, and with my other hand... Gently shoved the cat away from the snake so it would knock it off. And then I was like, somebody come grab the cat, put the cat inside the damn house. And me and grandma saved the day. Snake got into the grass, slithered off to do whatever it, whatever snakes do. So, first of all, I'm impressed that my cat got the snake in the first place because it's, you know, snakes have different kind of ability to sense things than cats do and the only way she probably could have grabbed it was that it she came up on behind it it was probably like going into a hole or something and she just went nope and grabbed it and ripped it out um uh, before anybody asks why my she cat was named huey uh huey came from a litter of three kittens huey dewey and louie and we just never renamed her we didn't know it was, was a girl like, um, like oh that's carrie hi carrie oh you're katie oh kitties. <clears throat> kitties uh Kitty's name was uh, Steve Rogers. But, uh, you know, it's a female cat, but... Yeah, you could hold it. Like, well, uh, yeah, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, they have a female character named Stevie on Shit's Creek, so... Why yep, not? true. True. Why not? Uh, it's another snake story. I already mentioned, um, when it comes to people in my family petrified of snakes, my dad's actually number one. Hi, Dad. Shout out. One time, we're... Happy Father's Day. Yeah, happy Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> um... 
I, I don't remember what we were doing in the front yard. If we were just re if we were repositioning the rocks because we used to have rocks in front of our house, like a little like rock path, mm -hmm. and uh, or if we were like replanting something. But I I moved a plant like a planter, and I found a snake underneath. And I went, oh hey, look what I found. My dad comes over and looks, and he just takes a shovel and just goes to town on this snake. And I'm like, why did you do that? Effin hate snakes. Yeah, I figured that part out, but why did you do that? <laughs> that was his response to the the and that was like a small little snake too, like but and then uh I have a more recent snake story. This one actually happened in Florida. Um I was doing working security at the Omni Hotel, last job I had before I moved out of Florida. And a snake got into the banquet area and was hiding under a big pallet jack. And, again, too many people terrified of snakes. And they also didn't want to mess with it because nobody saw what kind of snake it was. And you know how Florida is with venomous snakes. Yeah. So yeah. It, was, it was a fair fear. So, of course, they call security. Because who else are you going to call? So I walk over. I get down on the floor and I, I do like the peek under. And I can see the snake and I can see it's a pretty decent size. It appears to be a black snake, which means that's probably not venomous, but I don't want to take my chances. So I say, okay, here's what I'm going to do. And I find, like, the one other person that works in this hotel. It's like a four-star resort. So hundreds of employees. I find, like, the one other person that's not scared of snakes in Florida. You know? Jesus, guys. Come on. Killing me. So I'm like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the pallet under the thing. You know, I'm going to put the pallet jack under. I'm going to lift up the pallet, and I'm going to slowly move it back. As I start to unveil the snake, take the broom and shove it out the door. Because we're really close to a service door, which is how it got in in the first place. And just push it out the door. And I'll take the other broom as soon as I've got clearance. We'll push it together. We'll get it outside and we'll shut the door. Fair plan, right? So, I get in position. Pallet jack underneath. Jack it up. Begin to move the pallet back. Well, we didn't have to worry about getting the snake out with the broom. Would you like to know why? Somebody run it over with a forklift. Because when I moved the pallet jack, I severed the snake. Oh. Into, into three pieces. And I feel really bad about that. Into three pieces? There were three snakes now. None of them were moving. So there were there were no snakes. <laughs> That's what you meant to say. And that, that there was three. There was no snakes now. <laughs> I feel really bad about this because I don't want to just like wantonly kill animals for nothing. I didn't know I was going to actually kill it with the pallet jack. I actually thought I was going around the snake, but either it moved in the time it took me to put the pallet jack underneath, or or my aim was just off, or my my depth perception was off. I don't know. I feel bad about it. But at least nobody was scared anymore. Because now no, nobody's terrified of a dead snake. But I feel like they should be. Because venomous snakes can, are still fucking dangerous even after they're dead. But a lot of people don't, don't know that. As long as you don't touch the fangs. But Yeah, that's true. Uh, I have a camping animal story. This is actually a good one. I have a this... shark story. Oh boy! <laughs> okay, okay. Let me tell mine first. Then we got to then we got to hear the shark story. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So this is my first true overnight camping trip without my parents. It's only like a weekend thing, but I'm a little homesick because that that happens on your first camping trip alone. You do get a little homesick, and I'm kind of just sitting outside. And I'm eating a hot dog, and I'm just kind of like, I'm a little sad. I'm not, like, really upset, but I'm just a little sad, a little down. And someone's like, hey, cheer up. Come over and have some popcorn with us. I'm like, oh, cool. He goes, yeah, we, we've got a giant bag of popcorn. We shine our flashlights over, and there's a raccoon trying to get into the popcorn bag. I'd never actually seen a raccoon before. They're like, hey, get away from the bag. Raccoon takes off and everything. A uh, raccoon came back, and the best part is uh, one of the Scoutmasters brought his guitar and would sing campfire songs and he was singing Rocky Raccoon. The raccoon showed up during Rocky Raccoon. Like he couldn't have timed that better. All of a sudden the freaking raccoon was back going after the popcorn again. And we're like, hey, there's Rocky. He heard his song. So we're laughing about it. But at the same time, we're like, get away from the popcorn. 
And our raccoons even ate popcorn. Okay, so shark. Spill. Okay. <coughs> Eric well, versus the shark. I got to hear this. We are in Florida. Big surprise. Shocker. Right. And uh, we actually have a trip that we're going to the Keys. Uh, so okay. we're going to supposed to be like not not the um, we, we aren't diving. We're like snorkeling. Okay. Right. That's the uh, one in the place in Florida I've never been that I would actually still want to go to are the Keys. It's fucking beautiful. Yeah. Just have to go there before a hurricane. <laughs> well, I'm not going um, during a hurricane. <laughs> well, don't go there after a hurricane either. Because <laughs> there's not much left normally. Anyway, so uh, we go to the Keys and we're getting ready to snorkel and everything like that. And right before, they give you a few lessons, right? Because there's certain gear. Um, it's not diving gear, but it's pretty close, right? Because that, that snorkel will get filled up with water, and there's uh, they're like, hey, there's this thing that you can do to prevent that from happening, right? They've got certain gear where there's, like, a little ball in there, so when it, like, the water senses it, it cups that, so that entire from piece from here all the way to the top of the snorkel won't get filled up, but they're just like, you can't, you have to make sure that that's, like, perfectly 90 degrees, because if it's just... Slightly tilted, it's going to get filled up with water. Not that big of a deal. You just, once you feel, if you feel the water in there, you just know when you get up, you're going to have to blow really hard. So they always tell you before you go down, fill up your lungs with air. Okay. Right? Now, uh, just but isn't happen. the point of snorkeling that you can still breathe? No, that's, um, the, that's diving. Diving is like you, the snorkeling is you can go down and you don't need to fully come up. Like, you, you still need to get that little piece up above the water, but you can still right. look and everything like that. Right, so, right. So you're, you're kind of breathing. Yeah. You could breathe if you didn't want to go that deep. Like, if you just wanted to stay surface level and kind of just, you know, look down and be like, right, oh, right. look at all the cool fish and stuff. But if you wanted to get closer to the actual yeah. reefs. So I was just like, <laughs> well, all right. At, so. at that point, I'd rather just put on the scuba gear. Yeah, but, you know, we're, we're preteens. We're tweens, and they're not going to pay for us to get, like, scuba, scuba Or trust gear. you. Or diving gear, yeah. Um, so, or, or trust or anything. Or trust, exactly. Matter of fact, yeah. <laughs> so, um, the coral reefs are fucking great. If you've never been, just go. It's awesome. The fish don't care. They're not scared of you because uh, they got bigger problems, which is later in the story. But <laughs> um, we were having this competition where we we're kind of like, I don't know, maybe 30 feet away from the boat, uh, not too far, right? And we have these emergency things where if whatever reason we got tired or whatever, we could just bloop, it inflates, we go, and they, we float to the top, okay. looking like little dum-dums, they'll come pick us up and, and whatnot. That's a good uh, safety feature, though. Yeah. Um. But we were having competitions like, oh, how far down can we go and stuff like that. So we're like, all right. Um, current is a bitch. First off, you don't ever feel it. You just think you're going straight down. But every time you go down and you come back up, you're in a different place than you were before. Right. So it's not terrible. It's not like, oh, I go down and wake uh, and come back up and I'm like, oh, shit, I'm in Cuba. But like, you know, <laughs> like you, you've moved. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I was like, 90, all right, so that's 90 miles away. If you went that far, you'd have a much bigger problem. Right. Uh, so I go down. Um, there's probably 10 of us. And you get like, there's more people, right? But like, I'm talking about just the, the Boy Scout group. And I see other people from other groups getting off uh, out of the water. Uh, and it's pretty close. And I'm like, all right, it's the last dive. That's when in my head is like, this is the last trip. We're like going down or whatnot. So I go through. I go as like uh, deeper than I ever thought that I could. I get really close to like the actual like corals and stuff like that. Fucking awesome. And I was just like, this is great. There's no fish down here. Weird. Anyway, so I start making my way up because now I am like out of breath kind of, and I'm just working my way up and I, I see this really cool, looks like a dolphin type of yeah, thing yeah, it does um fun fact dolphin fins they're 
they're horizontal, right? Okay. Um, shark fins are ver- their tail fins, not like the, the thing on their back, but their tail fins. <coughs> look right, because it's a uh, it's the difference between mammal and fish, I think. Yeah. So again, not really paying attention to the the tail. I just see what I think is. A dolphin. And I'm like, oh, this is fucking sweet as shit. And in my head, still makes sense. Fish scared of dolphins. Dolphins eat fish. i like, all right, cool. It gets closer. I'm like, that dolphin's uh, pretty, uh, pretty angry. <laughs> pretty angry looking. And it dawns on me that this is a shark. Oh, fuck me. It is a... I, I, and I'm pretty sure it was like a little Mako shark. Now, luckily for me... Mako sharks, if they've had contact with humans, know that humans aren't food. And they won't. They'll just leave you the fuck alone. Because they know you're not food. Still not very comforting for me. Because I don't know that. I don't know that this no, this shark knows that I'm not food. <laughs> so I see this. And I'm just like, my initial response was just like, I become a life buoy. So I'm just floating to the fucking top and I get there and this boat must have been like a mile away from where I came up like literally a mile away and everybody was getting out of the water because they were told that there's a shark in the water no one told me mainly because I was too far away from the boat so we never heard the announcement plus when you're underwater you don't really hear shit right you're just expecting somebody who is above water and heard the announcement that's near you to come and get you and be like, hey, we got to go. Nobody did that shit. So I find myself making this journey to the boat while everybody is screaming, shark in the water! (laughs) And in my head, I'm just like, yeah, no shit. You don't need to tell me anymore. You're not helping. In my head, sharks become magical creatures, right? I'm like, oh, God. It can probably, like feel my heartbeat it knows i'm like scared and and it's probably like oh it's gonna toy with me it's just gonna wait till i get close to the fucking boat and it's like haha i got you bitch and pull me down like i'm thinking a whole bunch of like worst case scenario things i know nothing about sharks at this moment meanwhile and it probably just, went completely the opposite direction and it's already gone at this point oh no it followed me all the way to the boat oh did it okay yeah Dude, like every once in a while, they they were like pointing on where it's at. Imagine going to a boat and people <laughs> at the boat are going, you know, it's over there now. Oh, it's over. There. I'm like, oh fuck me, it's following me. I finally make it back, and everybody was just like, "You okay?" I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not okay. I want to go home. I fucking hate the keys. <laughs> but up until then, I had the greatest time. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, they apparently uh, they had an issue with some other uh, tourists feeding the sharks and stuff like that because mm. because because tourists, right? That's how the bear population in Sussex County got bad because there were people in the lake communities who were like feeding the bears, so the bears kept coming. Yep. And then well, they actually had to start arresting people for that. It, it, it's kind of twofold, right? Because that same scenario helped me. Because these people were feeding the sharks, the sharks came, right? So right. that's the initial problem. But because Mako sharks are very intelligent, like very fucking intelligent, they know that we're not food, but they know that we supplied them with food, All which right. is why he fucking stuck around. So, uh, like, at the well, same time, you, because but you got something tasty in your pocket, right? Like, hey, we're not here for you, but we're here for your food. Where, like, where's that Snickers bar at? Give that to me. But like, you ever <coughs> run so fast and so far? No. <laughs> that you like lose lose your breath. You're out of breath, and your heart is like pounding. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Imagine you get that feeling, but you're swimming. No, I would be dead. I'm dead at this <laughs> point. I've already drowned. I'm just, I'm a corpse in the ocean right now. So, yeah, that that was, that's my shark story. But then I learned more about Mako sharks and stuff like that. And if you ever get a chance, look up Mako shark. This and is then fun, you'll realize 
I'm hearing stories about you I've never heard before. Uh, yeah, well, you, you mentioned Boy Scouts, and I was like, oh, I got scouting Well, yeah, stories. we got to tell scouting stories. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> Did well, you make it to Eagle Scout? No. I um, So we were in Scouts, and at some point they had transitioned from Scouts – sorry, from Boy Scouts to Explorers. Right. Yeah, I know Explorer Scouts. That's co-ed, right? Yes. Right. Uh, and then they didn't. They don't do the eagle and stuff like that when they when you're in uh, in explorers. Okay. Um, because they're I forgot what they they called it new things, right? But they didn't have an eagle scout equivalent. Okay. Because boy scouts was still a thing, and they didn't want to give girls boy scout badges. And okay. they didn't want Girl Scouts to have our boys to have Girl Scout badges. So they just came up with like a new badge system so that everything would. Yeah, but they didn't have it. Then <laughs> I mean, I kind of get that. It was, it was it was literally brand new. So we you did want... everything that the Boy Scouts did, but they didn't have any badges or anything for us to actually get. Do you want to know the biggest lie that I was told about being an Eagle Scout was? That once that went on my job resume, I would get hired like crazy. Do you know what nobody has ever mentioned on my job resume in my eagle entire scout. professional career no one's ever brought up eagle scout it's on there but nobody's ever brought it up you know what they do talk about disney. you worked at disney yep that's what they yeah. want to talk about nobody has ever brought up eagle scout not one time so that was something that i would like to remind my old scout masters if any of them are listening to this um, I think you lied to me about that one. I don't think they lied. I think it meant something for them. And, and they maybe it's a generational thing. Because you don't meet a lot of Eagle Scouts now. No, I don't. I, you really don't. But I like, think it, I don't think there's Boy Scouts anymore. I think it's just Scouts. I think they got rid of the Girl Scout, Boy Scout thing. And now it's just Scouts. So now I'm just part of a rare breed. <laughs> uh, Yeah. So it's actually pretty cool when you make Eagle Scout, um, you get letters from people. You get a lot of letters from the government officials. Um, <clears throat> when I made Eagle Scout, the president at the time was George W. Bush. So I got a letter from him. I got a letter from the Clintons. I got a letter from Jimmy Carter. I got a letter from Dick Cheney. And I got a letter from, like, the senators, uh, Joe Biden and Mitt Romney, if you ever heard of them. They're just, like, senators or something. Like, I don't know if they ever did anything. Other than now, that, did you like, ever get one from Ted Cruz? No, fuck that no. guy. <laughs> um, I got, like, Colin Powell. Okay. Um, a lot of government officials. And then every now and again, if you wrote to a specific celebrity, sometimes you would actually get, like, a letter from them, which I thought would be really cool. Um, I'm going to date myself a little bit here, but one of my fellow scouts got a letter from Bill Cosby, which we all thought was awesome. This is in the 2000s, remember, people. Okay? So... We still liked Bill Cosby back then, or at least we thought we did. Uh, so I wrote to a couple of my favorite pro wrestlers, and I wrote to like four of them, and I got one letter back. It was a generic WWE letter, and I was just like, okay, well, I mean, that's still pretty cool that the organization acknowledged me and wrote me a letter. The best part is, this is something I actually didn't know at the time. I just got a letter from WWE. The lady who signed it turned out to be one of the talent agents who screwed over CM Punk when he was sick. That Punk brought up and blasted on podcasts years later. And I looked at the name and I was like, wait a minute. That's that lady. That's that lady I've heard horror stories about. So now I think it's hysterical when I went back and looked at the letter. Because I did this whole clean out at my parents' house. Um, it was like, you know, like... It was like the last remnants of stuff that was still mine that I'd never taken before, and they just wanted me to clear it out so they could eventually declutter the whole house and everything. And I was going through everything, and I'm like, I've never really looked at my scouting letters in a long time. And it was cool to see all the stuff that you got, because you get letters from <clears throat> all the branches of the military, because scouting's respected by the military. So, like, whoever some of the top generals were, U.S. Army, U.S. Navy, U.S. Marines, uh, Coast Guard... So I got letters from all kinds of people. So I was I always got a kick out of that. You get a lot of like wildlife 
um, like the World Wildlife Fund, and I can't remember. It was some kind of a par- some kind of official in the U.S. park system. It was not Leslie Nope, unfortunately. That I would have framed that one. <coughs> but yeah, it, it was cool. All the letters and stuff that you get, and you like put them out on display when you'd have your Eagle Scout ceremony. And that was a uh, another cool thing. I I don't have it here. The only thing my parents do still have, they have a couple of uh, paintings from my grandfather. Uh, the year I made Eagle Scout, the year later is the year my grandfather passed away, but one of the last paintings he ever made was an Eagle Scout painting he made for me, for Eagle Scout. And it was an eagle draped in the American flag with my name on it. And it was actually looked like, not like a real eagle, but like a statue of an eagle is what he painted. It was really cool. And uh, my grandfather learned to paint by watching Bob Ross. That's how he learned to paint. So all that I mean, you couldn't have picked a better like no like the best <laughs> paint instructor ever, and he had he had tons of landscape paintings and everything he made. My sister's got one he made for her. It's like a, a little girl sitting on the beach. Little girl supposed to be my sister. Like really cool stuff like that that I got. Um, and I do have a couple of other <clears throat> like I know he made um like cars passing in the desert and like a train. And he made those paintings for me. And one day when I have my own house where I can actually hang up paintings without care, as well as you look in my background, you can tell I really don't care that much. But, uh, yeah, those are all paintings that he made for me, and I'm going to keep those forever. But I always remembered that from making Eagle Scout. And it was a really cool accomplishment. Like, I'm, I'm really proud that I did it, and I loved all the memories and experiences I got from it. Um, it's funny because I still have all my merit badges that I had. Because I, I made, like, I think the minimum requirement was, like, 21 to make Eagle Scout. And I have, like, 24. There were, like, the ones that you were required to get. So, like, you had to get, like, the knot tying one and the first aid survival stuff. And you could just pick ones that you wanted. So I had, like, insect study and reptile study and things like that. You know. Those that you still remember how to do. Yeah. Because, like, I could identify insects and reptiles. So, Sure. Yes, that is a bug. All right, let's move on. <laughs> hey, thanks to Animal Crossing, I can identify at least 80 bugs. Oh, God. And 80 <laughs> kinds of fish and 40 kinds of sea creatures. All available in my museum. So, there you go. I mean, there were there were fun ones. There, there was, it, was, it was mostly, you know, community service stuff. But most of the required stuff were the ones that you would expect for scouting. Like right. there was there a was the ones that prepare you to survive out in the woods. Right. Basically. And then ones that were affiliated with stuff you were already doing. There was a camping merit badge. There was a hiking merit badge. So I got them by just going on camping trips and hikes yep. because that stuff accumulated. Right. And I think I've talked about this before, but my Eagle Scout project was we built benches for a trail. The trail's called the Liberty Loop Trail. It's literally over the border in the state of New York from the town I grew up in. Because the town I grew up in in New Jersey borders the state of New York and Orange County. And the loop trail actually takes you back into New Jersey and then back to New York if you walk the whole trail. If you actually, like, look at it on a map. But um, they needed benches made for it, so that's what we did. We built benches for it, and that was my Eagle Scout project. And I actually took a friend there to see the benches that I made. Really cool. Uh, they're still there. I'm still proud of that. Like, I'm really proud of that project. One of the benches is actually in my parents' backyard because when we were going to put the benches together, my dad and I built one together, and that was like the prototype because I think we wanted to make sure we could build it and see what it looked like. And the only difference between that bench and the ones that went on the trail was like that one didn't get like any kind of paint protection, and we didn't like saw off the nuts and bolts and everything to sand them down so they wouldn't be sticking out. Like that's literally the only difference. And I think the only other real difference was that those benches are anchored into the ground, so somebody can't just pull up in their pickup truck and yeehaw the bench right out of there. So, sorry if anybody wants to steal my benches, but you're going to have to work for that one. you got to dig that stuff up, so good luck. Did you? I would have, like, put some random things into the benches, so, like, if they do pull it out, they'd find, like, a fake skull or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, that's <laughs> so just That's me. what happened to little Billy on the last scouting trip. I told him, told him not to wake me up. Him. I told that guy if he farted in the tent one more time, that was it. 
So, oh, I just thought of another animal story from when we, I was high adventure hiking in New Mexico. So we had to take all those bear precautions, like you said. We never saw any bears out there, but we saw lots of deer. And the deer aren't scared of humans out there because they have no they have no interaction with humans. Because the, the mountains we were in were really isolated mountains. So the deer would just walk through the campsite and just look at you. Just casually walk through. You know, like if you see a deer growing up in New Jersey, if I saw a deer in the backyard and I made any kind of a noise, all the deer were gone. So whenever we would see the deer, if we wanted to watch them, we had to be really quiet. Until they started destroying my mom's apple bushes, then she started making noise. Shotgun noises. No, no, you can't do that. <laughs> can't do that. But um, I think I told you guys this on like past podcasts and everything, but since we're doing this new content for YouTube... So the town is called Cimarron, New Mexico. It's the town right outside the big scout scout camp, Philmont, New Mexico. Cimarron is literally a three-street town. It has like three main roads and then little side roads with houses on it. And the, it had, I think it has a census population of like 900 people. Really, really small town. But it was famous because the hotel where Billy the Kid got shot is in there. And you can actually see the bullet holes like preserved in the wall and everything. So that's like where the historic part comes in. Um, I'll say this. We got tacos at a taco stand. I'll be damned if those weren't some of the best tacos I ever had in my life. So if I ever, I journey, it. If I ever journey back out there, I want more tacos. Uh, uh, tacos. I had tacos for dinner. Mm. That was also the, uh, the night before we, we had a camp out in, our, in the church where we would have our scout meetings. And because we we had a super early flight, so we decided instead of just get we would just gather everybody up into a big van and go down to the airport together. So we would just camp out, watch movies and everything, and then just go to the airport. And we were like, let's watch some movies to fall asleep. What would be a good movie? Oh, I know Dogma. And that was the first time I ever saw Dogma. That was my introduction to Jane Silent Bob was that that movie. Hey, that's a great intro. <clears throat> it was, Definitely yeah. A great intro. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's Jay and Silent Bob. They're like, yeah, they're in some other great movies. You should check out these movies, Clerks and Mallrats and Chasing Amy. I will do just Eight, that. Seven? In a row? <laughs> and then, of course, like the next summer, they released their uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back came out. And I got to go see that for the first, that was like my, I, I was all caught up. I'm like, I'd seen all the Jay and Silent Bob movies. So... More connections there. This was fun, man. I feel like we should wrap it up and save up another topic for for another. It's been about an hour. Yeah, it's been about an hour or so. Yeah, okay. All right. So what did you guys think of just me and Eric hanging out on YouTube and just talking? Like, you guys like this? Do you want more of this? So here's here's your your homework assignment, people. Because you know know I'm going to send this to all my friends. And I know you're going to send this to your friends. And we know... We know which one of our mutual friends are going to watch this and either laugh their asses off or just roll their eyes at the fact that we both did really stupid stuff with animals. Um, yeah. What would you guys like us to talk about in another episode? Uh, we can do little one-hour YouTube podcast video casts of just me and Eric talking. Oh, uh, I have a suggestion. Oh, boy. Should talk about our ex-girlfriends. No. <laughs> That is the best. You know what? I'm glad we're doing YouTube just so I can see your facial reactions again. Great. No. <laughs> this is fucking perfect. Maybe I'll tell one or two stories on another, but I'm not doing a whole episode on that. What should we just call this Chris and Eric talk? Chris and Eric hang yeah. out. Why not? Yeah. And the cats. None of my the, uh... Yeah, I'm surprised yours didn't show up. My oh wait, where'd they go? Okay, there's one. Hi. Yeah, the other one's still on top. Yeah. There's still cats up there. That's kitty. That yeah, kitty. Oh, yeah. Good yawn. Good yawn. All right. Uh, yeah, if, if you, you guys... Like good whatever they're doing, they just kind of will torture you Listen, later. if the cat's being good, let the cat be, okay? Just let the cat be. Damn. All right. So here's, here's your homework assignment, guys. Uh, give us some topics that you want Eric and I to talk about, and maybe once a week we'll put out a new YouTube video. We'll just sit here and chat. And talk about whatever you guys want us to talk about. Give us some specific topics. Uh, we'll we'll BS a little bit. Um, if you're a patron, patron.com slash club kayfabe, your topics get prioritized. 
So let us know what you guys want us to talk about. Yes. I feel like it's important that we talk about something that we both are kind of knowledgeable in or something that we've both done. Yeah, yeah. And the Disney stuff would be just too easy. Give us some other stuff to discuss. Right. We can always go back to Disney. We can always go back to Disney. Oh, I don't know if I can. But yes, we can always talk about Disney. At this point, if I ever move back Listen, to Florida. The Shrek Theater's and- closed now, Eric. You're fine. I can't work at Universal. I don't know if I can work at Disney, but that just leaves SeaWorld, really. You know what? I'm actually curious. I kind of just want to put in a job application and just see if I even get a phone call. I'm actually curious. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll do more of these. Uh, me and Eric hanging out. I know you guys wanted more content with me and Eric. So, here you go. Oh, boy. And I know what's going to happen. Eric's going to start doing stuff to just get me to react, get me to laugh yeah. uncontrollably. Isn't that the whole purpose of this? Yes. I thought this is this was like our thing, dude. It is. <laughs> it is. And nothing broke this time. That's true. That I'm aware of until I go into until I go to upload the video and <laughs> I'll get a, a text later. We're like nothing recorded. Everything was. No, just it's blank. going. That's a red light right there. It's recording. It is recording. It's supposed to be green. No, I'm just. (laughs) Is it? Crap. (laughs) Um, Only things we're not going to talk about is anything that's cancelable on YouTube. I'm not talking about politics. I'm not talking about religion. First of all, stuff's boring. You guys don't want to hear us talk about that anyway. Uh, Give us fun stuff to talk about. And uh, or ask us questions or ask for advice. Eric Ooh, loves advice. giving life advice. Yes. I would never follow them. Would, would you like advice on how to deal with a crazy ex-girlfriend? Ask us. Cause we don't I've... have any crazy exes. W- w- we? No, 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 no. Hold on yeah. a second. Don't, don't we that one. Oh, maybe, you froze. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. But I do. And you're frozen, bud. I lost Eric. Okay, guess that's the end of the episode.